Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Joel Elder and by the grace of God I was able to memorize the book of Revelations, which I'll be reciting from memory. The book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. John to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and the people of the earth shall mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and companion in kingdom and suffering and patient endurance, that is ours in Jesus, was all in the island of Patmos, because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. In the Lord's day I was in spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. His voice was like the sound of rushing waters, and his feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining with all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and Hades. Write therefore what you have seen, what is now and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven golden lampstands are the seven churches. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work and perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and found them false. You have persevered and endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I have this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I'll come to you and remove a lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I'll give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. To the angel of the church in Pergamum write, These are the words of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know your deeds, I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you have kept my word and did not deny my name, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful servant, who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold to the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin, by eating of food sacrificed to idols, and by committing sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have there those who hold to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise I'll come to you and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I'll give some of the hidden manna. I'll also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, not only to him who receives it. To the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, that you are now doing more than you did at first. Yet I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my men into sexual immorality and eating of food sacrificed to the idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering and make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then the nations, then the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds and will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now to the rest of you in Thyatira who do not hold to her teachings, and I have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets. I will not impose any other burden on you. 
Only hold on to what you have until I, until I come. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I'll give authority over the nations. He'll rule them with an iron scepter. He'll dash them to pieces like pottery. Just as I received authority from my father, I'll also give him the morning star. To the angel of the church in Sardis right? these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will like them be dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but I will acknowledge his name before my father and his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know you are of little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not renounced your, renounced your faith in me. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down before you and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my commandment to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial which is coming down upon the whole world to test all who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Bless I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my God. I will also write on him, I'll also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other. But since you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I, have I am rich, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire so you may be rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you may see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and eat with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I'll give right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. After this, I saw a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I'll show you what must take place after this. At once I was in spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. The one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. A rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were twenty-four other thrones, and seated on them were twenty-four elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. Out of the throne, from the throne came flash of lightning, rumbling, and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also before the throne was what looked like a sea of glass. In the center around, in the, center around the throne were four living creatures. They were covered with eyes all around, in the front and in the back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, the third had the face like a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under his wings. Day and night they will never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who was, and who is to come. Whenever the four living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne, and to him who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders will fall down before him who sits on the throne, and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sits on the throne, a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to open the seal, who is worthy to break the seal and open the scroll. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or even look inside it. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the house of Judah, the root of David has primed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamp, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamp came, he had seven eyes and seven horns, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sits on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamp. Each one had a harp and was holding a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of all the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy. 
you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals for you were slain and by your will for you were slain and by your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe language people and nation and made them to be kingdom and priests to serve as God and father and they'll reign on earth then i heard the voices of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10000 times 10000 and circling the throne and the four living creatures and the 24 elders they all sang in a loud voice for he is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise then i heard every living creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them sing to him salvation belongs to a god who sits on the throne and to the lamb the 24 the all the four, the four living creatures said amen and the 24 elders fell down and worshiped i watched as the lamb opened the first of the seven seals Then one of the four living creatures said in a loud voice, like thunder, "Come!" And there, bef- and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow and was given a crown. He rode out as a conqueror bent on a conquest. When the lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, "Come!" Then another horse came, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take beasts from earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. When the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, "Come!" And there before me was a black horse. His rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand, and I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures say, "A quart of wheat for a day's wage, and three quarts of barley for a day's wage, and do not damage the oil and the wine." When the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the fourth living creature say, "Come!" And there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, by plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They cried out in a loud voice, "How long, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood?" They were each given a white robe and were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow brothers, until the number of their fellow brothers and servants were completed, who were to be killed just as they had been were completed. I watched as the lamb opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black as sack, sackcloth made of goat hair, and the moon turned blood red, blood red. The stars of the sky fell to the earth like laid figs dropped from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The sky receded, rolling up like a scroll, and every island and mountain was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the rich, the generals, the mighty, and every slave and free man hid among caves and under rocks of mountains. They called to the rocks and the mountains, "Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne." For the great day of His wrath has come, and who can stand? Then I saw four. Then I saw the four angels, who stand at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth. And I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of God. He called to the four angels who had the power to harm the land and the sea, "Do not harm the land or the sea until we put a seal of God on their fore- seal of God on the foreheads of the people of our God." I heard the number of those who were sealed: one lakh forty-four thousand from all the tribes of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, twelve thousand were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, twelve thousand. From the tribe of Gad, twelve thousand. From the tribe of Asher, twelve thousand. From the tribe of Naphtali, twelve thousand. From the tribe of Manasseh, twelve thousand. From the tribe of Simeon, twelve thousand. From the tribe of Levi, twelve thousand. From the tribe of Issachar, twelve thousand. From the tribe of Zebulun, twelve thousand. From the tribe of Benjamin, from the tribe of Joseph, twelve thousand. And from the tribe of Benjamin, twelve thousand. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every tribe, language, people, and nation, standing before the throne. And in front of the lamp, they were dressed in white and were holding palm branches in their hands. They cried in a loud voice, "Salvation belongs to a God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb." All the angels were standing before the throne and around the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders. They fell on their faces before God and worshipped God, saying, "Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God for ever and ever. Amen." Then one of the elders asked to me, "These in white, who are they and where do they come from?" I answered, "So you know." He said to me, "These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their clothes and made it white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve Him in His temple. And Him who sits on the throne will spread a tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. The Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to springs of waters, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes." When the lamb, when the lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour, and I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer along with the prayers of all the saints. 
the smoke from the incense and along with the prayers of the saints went up before God from the angel's hand. The angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it on the earth. And there came flashes of lightning, rumbling, peals of thunder and an earthquake. The seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet and there came hail and fire mixed with blood and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees burned up and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded his trumpet and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood, a third of the living creatures of the sea died and a third of the ships of the sea were destroyed. The third angel sounded his trumpet and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky to a third of rivers and springs of waters. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light and also a third of the night. As I watched, I saw an eagle flying in midair call out in a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss and when he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and the sky were darkened by the smoke that came up out of the abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down upon the earth. They were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any trees, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not given power to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death, but will not find it. They long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. They wore something like crowns of gold on their heads, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like woman's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. Their, breastplate, their breastplates were like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails and stings like scorpions, and in their tails they were given power to torment people for five months. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, Apollyon. The first voice passed, the other two woes are yet to come. When the sixth angel sounded his trumpet, I heard a voice from the golden altar, I heard a voice from the horns of the golden altar say to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Go, release the four angels bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who were kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of mounted troops were 200 million. I heard their number. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue and yellow as sulfur. The heads of horses resembled human heads, resembled the heads of lions. And out of their mouths came the three, out of their mouths came fire, smoke and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the, ho the, power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes, having heads which with they inflict injury. Now the rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone and wood. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality or their thefts. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed with a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun and his legs were like, were like fiery pillars. He held a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land and gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, I heard the voices of the seven thunders speak. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write it down. But I heard a voice from heaven say, seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. Then the angel I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in them, the sea and all that is in them, and said, there will be no more delay. But in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished, just as he had announced to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice I had heard from heaven spoke to me once more, go take the scroll which lies open in the hands of the angel standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sore, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. I took the scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. It tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sore. Then I was told, you must prophesy again about many nations, peoples, languages and kings. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar and count the worshippers there but exclude the outer court because it had been given to the Gentiles and they'll trample on the holy city for 42 months. After that, I'll give power to my two witnesses, 
who will prophesy for 1260 days pressed in sackcloth these are the two olive trees and two olive trees and two lampstands that are before the lord of the earth if anyone tries to harm them fire comes out of their mouth and devours their enemies this is how anyone who wants to harm them must die these two men have power to shut up the sky so that it does not rain during the time they are prophesying they also have power to turn water into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up out of the abyss will over attack and overpower and kill them. And their bodies will lie in the streets of the great city, figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their, where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, men from every tribe, people and language will gaze upon their bodies and refuse them burial. They they, all the inhabitants of the earth will gloat over their death and will celebrate by sending each other gifts. For these two men have tormented those who live on the earth. But after three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet. Terror struck, who, terror struck everyone who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. At that very hour, there was a severe earthquake. A tenth of the city collapsed and 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake. The survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of the heaven. The second war is past. The third war is coming soon. When this, the seventh angel sounded his trumpet and I heard the voice, I heard loud voices in heaven say, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of the Lord and of his Christ and they will reign on earth. The 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God saying, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken a great power and began to reign. The nations were angry and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants, the prophets and the saints, and all who reverence your name, both small and great, and for, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumbling peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a great hailstorm. Then I saw a great and marvelous sign in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. On her head, She was pregnant and was crying in great pain as she was about to give birth. I saw and another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. His tail swept a third of the stars out of the, out of the sky and flung them to the earth. He stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. The woman gave birth to a son, a male child who ruled all the nations with an iron scepter. He was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled down and his angels with him. Then I heard loud voices in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and kingdom and now has come the salvation and power and kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. Because the accuser of our brethren, who accuses them day and night before God has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of Jesus and by the words of their testimony. They did not love life so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice you heavens and all who are in them, but woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of a great eagle to fly to a place prepared for her in the desert, where she might be taken care of for a time, times and half a time, out of the serpent's reach. Then out of, the, out of his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river, to overtake the woman and to sweep her away with the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the serpent had spewed out of his mouth. Then the serpent was great. Then the serpent was enraged, and when the serpent saw this, the serpent was enraged and went off to make war against the rest of her offsprings, who obey God's commandments and hold the testimony of Jesus. And the serpent and the dragon stood at the shore of the sea. And I saw another. Be I saw a beast coming out of the sea, having seven heads and te having ten horns and seven heads and ten crowns on his horn, and on each head a blasphemous name. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, the, but his, its feet were like those of a bear, and its mouth was like that of a lion. The beast, the dragon gave the beast his power and his authority and his throne. The inhabitants of one of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The inhabitants of the earth were astonished, and they followed the beast. They worshipped the dragon because the dragon had given his authority to the beast. They also worshipped the beast and asked, who is like the beast? who can make war against him.
the beast had been given a mouth to blaspheme the beast had been given a mouth to blaspheme utter blasphemies and to exercise his authority for 42 months the beast opened his mouth to blaspheme god and and to slander his dwelling place and those who live in heaven he was given power to make war against the saints and to overpower them he was also given authority over every tribe language people and nation all the inhabitants of the earth all, all the inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast all whose names have not been written in the book of life belong to the lamb who had been slain from the creation of the earth he who has an ear let him hear if anyone is to go into captivity into captivity he will go if anyone is to be killed by the sword by the sword he will be killed this calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on part of the saints then i saw another beast coming out of the lamb coming out of the land he had two horns like a lamp but he spoke like a dragon and he exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf he made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed he performed miraculous he performed great and miraculous signs even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men because of the because of the signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast he deceived the inhabitants of the earth he ordered them to set up an image in honor of the first beast who was wounded by the sword and it lived he was given power to give breath to the image so that it could speak and could cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed he also forced everyone small and great rich and poor free and slave to receive a mark on his forehead or on his right hand so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark which is the name of the beast or the number of his name this calls for wisdom if anyone has insight let him calculate the number of the beast for it is the man's number his number is 666 then i looked and there before me was the lamb standing on mount zion and with him the one like 44000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads and i heard a sound from heaven the sound i heard and i heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder the sound i heard was like that of harpists playing their harps and they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the 24 elders no one could learn the song except the one like 44000 who were redeemed from the earth these are they who did not defile themselves with women for they kept themselves pure and they follow the lamb wherever he goes they were purchased from among men and offered as first fruits to the, to god and to the lamb no lie was found in their mouths they are blameless then i saw another angel flying in midair he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to all those who live on the earth to every nation tribe people and language he called out in a loud voice fear god and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come worship him who created the heavens and the earth and the sea and the springs of waters a second angel followed and said fallen fallen is babylon the great who made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries a third angel followed and said in a loud voice if anyone worships the beast and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand he too will drink the wine of god's fury which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath he will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the saints the and his and the smoke of his torment rises up forever and ever there is no rest for them day or night there is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast or receive the mark of his name this calls for patient endurance on part of the saints who obey god's commandments and remain faithful to jesus then i heard a loud voice from heaven say right blessed are the dead who die in the lord from now on yes says the spirit they will rest from their labor for their deeds will follow them then after this i looked and there before me was a cloud I, and seated on the cloud was someone like a son of man. He was dressed he, with a crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. And the angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was seated on the cloud. To him who was seated on the cloud, take your sickle and reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. For the time to reap has come. Then him who was seated on the cloud took his sickle and swung it over the earth, and the earth was harvested. And the angel who another angel who had a sharp sickle and the angel came out of the temple he too had a sharp sickle still another angel who had charge of the fire came and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle take your sharp sickle and gather clusters of grapes from the earth's vine for its grapes are ripe then he then the angel swung his sickle on the earth and gathered clusters of grapes from the earth's vine and threw them into the great wine press of god's wrath and they trampled in the wine press outside the city and blood flowed out of it like and blood flowed out of the press as high as the horse's bridles for a distance of 1600 stadia i saw another great and marvelous sign in heaven seven angels with the seven last plagues last because with them god's wrath is completed and i saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire standing beside the sea those who were victorious over the beast and over the number of his name they held harps given to them by god and sang the song of moses the servant of god and the song of the lamb
Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the ages, who will not fear you, O Lord, and give glory to your name. The nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Then the temple, after this, I saw the temple, that is the tabernacle of the testimony, open. And out of the temple came seven angels with the seven last plagues. Seven last plagues. They were dressed in fine linen, bright and clean. One of the seven, one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God, whose lives forever and ever. Then the temple was filled with smoke from the power of God and from His glory. No one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were complete. Then I heard a voice from the temple say, "Go pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth." The first angel poured out his bowl on the land, and ugly and painful sores broke out on all who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood, like that of a dead man. The third angel poured out his bowl on the springs and rivers of uh, on the rivers and springs of waters, and it became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, "You are just in these judgments, you who are and who were, the you who are and who were, because you have so judged. For they have shed the blood of." Your saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And I heard the altar respond, "Yes, Lord God Almighty, just and true are your judgments." The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was given, and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. They were seared by the intense heat, and they cursed, the, and and the men cursed the name of God on, a, on and the men cursed the name of God who had authority over the plagues. But they refused to repent and glorify Him. The fifth angel poured out his bowl. On the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. Men gnawed their teeth in agony. Men gnawed their teeth in agony, and cursed the name of God on account of their pains and their sores. But they refused to repent of what they had done. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs coming out of the mouth of the coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. These are the three. These are spirits of demons performing miraculous signs, and they go out to the kings of the earth to gather them for battle on the great day of Lord Almighty. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who stays awake, stays awake and keeps his clothes with him, so that he may not go naked and shamefully exposed. Then they gathered the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and out of the throne, out of the temple, came a voice from the throne saying, "It is done." And there came flashes of lightning, rumbling, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since man has been on earth. So tremendous was the quake. The great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the Great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of His wrath. Every island fled away, and mountains could not be found. Out of the sky, huge hailstones of about a hundred pound each fell upon men, and they cursed the name of God on account of the plague of hail, because so terrible was the plague. Then one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of seven last plagues, came and said to me, "Come, I'll show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the merchants and the nations of the earth were intoxicated by the wine of her adulteries." The angel carried me away in the spirit to a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered that was covered with blasphemous names. The woman was dressed in that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet, and was glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand, which was filled with abominable things and with the filth of her adulteries. This title was written on her forehead: "Mystery, Babylon the Great, Mother of Prostitutes and of the Abominations of the Earth." I saw that she was drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. When I saw her, I was great, greatly astonished. <clears throat> Then the angel said to me. Why are you astonished? I'll explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast. She writes, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast you saw once was, now is not, and yet will come up out of the abyss and go to its destruction. The inhabitants of the earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world, will be astonished when they see the beast, because it once was, now is not, and yet will come. This calls for wisdom. The seven heads you saw. Are seven hills on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is the other has not yet come. But when he does come, he must remain for a little while. The beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. The ten horns you saw are the ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority along with the beast. They have one purpose and will make 
and will give their power and authority to the beast. They'll make war against the lamb, but the lamb will overcome them because he is the king of kings and lord of lords. And with him will be his called, chosen and faithful followers. Then the angel said to me, the waters you saw on which the woman sits, they are multitudes, peoples, languages and nations. The, the beast and the ten horns you saw will hate the woman. They'll bring her to ruin and leave her naked. They'll eat her flesh and burn her with fire because God has put it into their hearts to accomplish his desire, accomplish his purpose by agreeing to give the beast their power to rule until God's words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. Then I saw another angel coming out of heaven. He had great authority and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice, he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a home for the demons and a home for Every and a horn for every unclean spirit, and a horn for every evil spirit, and a horn for every unclean and detestable bird. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Then I heard a loud voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my children, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her what she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done. Mix her a double portion from her own cup, give her as much torture and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit as a queen, I am not a widow, I will never mourn. Therefore in one day her plagues will overtake her, death, mourning and famine. She will be consumed by fire because mighty is the Lord God who judges her. When the kings of the earth who committed, ad committed adultery with her and shared in her luxury sees the smoke of her burning, they'll stand far off, terrified at her torment, they'll weep and mourn over her. Woe, woe, O great city, O Babylon, city of power, in one hour your doom has come. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. Cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones and pearls, of fine linen, purple silk and scarlet cloth. Scarlet cloth. Every sort of citron wood and artifacts of every kind made of ivory. Cargoes of cinnamon and costly wood, iron, bronze, costly wood, bronze, iron and marble. Cargoes of cinnamon and spice, incense, myrrh and spice and frankincense, of wine and olive oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages and bodies and souls of men. They'll say, the fruit you have longed for is gone from you. All your riches and splendor have vanished, never to be recovered. When the merchants who sold these things and gained their wealth from her see the smoke of her burning, they'll stand far off. They'll terrify at her torment, they'll weep and mourn and cry out, woe, woe, O great city, dressed in purple silk and dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, Returning with gold, precious stones, and pearls, in one hour such great wealth has been brought to ruin. Every sea captain and all who travel by the ship, every sailor and all who earn the living from the sea will stand far off. When they see the smoke of a burning, they'll all exclaim, Was there ever a city like this great city? They'll throw dust on their heads and with weeping and mourning cry out, Woe, woe, a great city, where all who had ships on the sea grew rich from her wealth. In one hour she has been brought to ruin. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, rejoice, saints, apostles, and prophets. God has judged her for the way she has treated you. Then, then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, with such violence, this great city of Babylon will be thrown down, never to be recovered. The music of harpists and musicians, flute players and trumpeters will never be heard in you again. No workman of any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a millstone will never be heard in you again. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of bride and bride's groom will never be heard in you again. Your merchants were the world's great men. By your magic spell, you led the whole world astray. In her was found the blood of the servants, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints, and of all who had been killed on the earth, and of all who had been killed on the earth. Then I heard what sounded like a roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, "Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belongs to our God who sits on the throne. For true and just are His judgment." He has, condemned the great, he has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her adultery. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Again they shouted, Hallelujah! For the, hallelujah, the smoke from her rose, rises up forever and ever. Twenty-four elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God who was seated on his throne. And they cried, Amen, Hallelujah! Then a voice came from the throne saying, Fear God, praise God, all you his servants. You who fear him, both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like the roar of great multitude, like, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder shouting. Sal hallelujah, salvation belong, hallelujah, for, the, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. 
for the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready fine linen bright and clean was given her to wear fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints then the angel said to me blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the lamb and he added these are the true words of god at this i fell at his feet to worship him but the angel said to me do not do it i am only a fellow servant with you and your brothers of and with you and your brothers worship god because the test, worship god because the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy i saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider was called faithful and true with justice he judges and makes war his eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns he has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself he is dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is the word of god the armies of the heavens were following him riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen white and clean out of his mouth comes a sharp, sharp sword with which to strike down the nations he rule he rule them with an iron scepter he treads on the wine press of the fury of the wrath of god on his robe and on his thigh he has this name written king of kings and lord of lords then i saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the, all the birds flying in mid air come gather together for the great supper of god almighty so that you may eat the flesh of kings generals and mighty men the flesh of horses and its riders and of old people small and great free and slave then i saw that the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies were gathered together to make war against the saint war against the rider on the lamb rider on the horse and his army but the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who had performed miraculous signs on his behalf with these signs he deluded those who received the mark of the beast and worshiped his image the two of them were thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur the rest of them were killed by the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse and all the birds of the air gorged on their flesh then another then i saw another angel coming out of heaven he had the key to the abyss and ho- and was holding in his hand a great chain he seized the dragon that ancient serpent who is the devil or satan and bound him for a thousand years he threw him into the abyss and sealed and locked it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations any more until the thousand years were ended after that he must be set free for a short time then i saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge and i saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for jesus and because of the word of god they had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received the mark of his mark of his name on their right on their foreheads or on their hands they came to life and reigned with reigned with christ a thousand years the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended this is the first resurrection blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection second that has no power over them but they will be priests of god and of christ and will reign with him for a thousand years after the thousand years are ended satan will be released from his prison and will go out and will go out to the nations in the four corners of the earth to deceive them to gog and magog to gather them for battle in number they are like sand on the seashore they marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of god's people the city he loves but fire came down from heaven and devoured them and the devil was and the devil who deluded and the devil who deceived them was thrown in to the lake of burning sulfur where also the beast and the false prophet had been thrown they will be tormented day and night forever and ever then i saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it the earth and the sky fled from his presence and there was no place for them and i saw the dead small and great standing before the throne and the books were opened another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead was judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books the sea gave up the dead that were in it and death and hades gave up the dead that were in them and each person was judged according to what he had done then death and hades were thrown into the lake of fire the lake of fire is the second death if anyone's name was not found in the book of life he was thrown into the lake of fire then i saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven and first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea i saw the holy city the new jerusalem coming down out of heaven from god prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband and i heard a loud and i heard a voice from the throne saying the dwelling of god is with men and he will reign and he will live with them they will be his people and he will be their god and his dwelling will be with them and he will live with them god will wipe every tear from their eyes there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away he who was seated on the throne said the throne said i am making everything new and he said write this down for these words are trustworthy and true he said to me It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of water of life. 
who he who overcomes will inherit all this. He will be my son, and I'll be his god. But the unbelie, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the wild, the murderers, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Then one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of seven last plagues, came and said to me, "Come, I'll show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb." And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. The city, the city had great high walls with twelve gates, and on each gate the name, and on each gate was written the twelve. And on each gate, and with twelve angels at each gate, and with twelve angels at the gates, and on each gate was the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The walls were made of twelve. The walls had walls of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were written the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. The angel measured the city and found it to be twelve thousand stadia long, and as wide and as high as it is long. He measured its walls, and they were and found it to be one hundred and forty-four cubits thick, by man's measurement, which the angel was using. The walls were made of jasper, and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the walls were decorated with every every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, and each gate was made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was made of pure pure gold, like transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it because the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates be, gates be ever closed, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful and deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, and yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. They will not. There will be no more night. They will not. They will not need the light of a la- light of the lamp or light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For oh, God will give them light, and they'll re- and they'll reign forever and ever. Then the angel said to me, "Write this down, for these these words are trustworthy and true." The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent His angel to show His servants the things that must soon take place. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of this prophecy. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had shown them to me. But the angel said to me, "Do not do it. I am only a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and of all who keep the words of testimony in this book. Worship God." Do not seal. Then he said, "Do not seal up the words of prophecy in this book, because the time is near. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is wild continue to be wild. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I'll give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right." To the tree of life, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the holy city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the sexually immoral, the wild, the unbelie, the sexually immoral, the murderers. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the wild, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I Jesus send my I Jesus have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, and the bright morning star. The Spirit and the bride says, "Come, whoever 
let him let him who hears say come whoever wishes it let him come and whoever is thirsty let and whoever wishes it let him take the free gift of what water of life <laughs> i want i want everyone who hears the words of this prophecy if anyone adds anything to them god will add to him the plagues described in this book and if anyone takes words away from them god will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city described in this book he who testifies to these things says yes i am coming soon amen come lord jesus the grace of lord jesus be with god's people amen